Good morning. We would like to welcome everybody to the Salvation Army in Port Charlotte. We also would like to welcome our viewers that are joining us online. Um, let me tell you how hard it is for me not to hug you, especially when I see you, and I'm so uh, I'm glad in the, in the Lord to see you. We also have new um, visitors today from Brazil, and we're very excited. Welcome, welcome. We hope to see you again. Um, well, thank you for being here. We have, um, uh, uh, we continue with our series on beyond the church, outside of the church. Um, just a couple of announcements. The biggest announcement is that this weekend in Walmart is our back to school drive. It is this weekend. I think this weekend is also tax free weekend. Um, there will be bins in each of the Walmarts around here in Englewood, Punta Gorda, Murdoch, Kings Highway, and even the neighborhood market. And the community will be able to place school supplies in those bins for our back to school giveaways that we'll have for, um, uh, for the community. So you'll see that, you'll probably see later today a little announcement on social media for you to share. We ask you to share it with your friends, that little social media clip, so that we can let our community know that it, the back to school drive is this weekend. Well, thank you for joining us today. We are going to pray and um, uh, thank the Lord for another day as our worship team comes forward. Lord, we love you and we thank you for a breath in our lungs. We thank you because we get to worship together through um, being in our homes or being here at church. We are together. Thank you, Lord, for this. Most importantly, thank you that we are together with you. Be in our presence, God. We ask for you. We ask for your Holy Spirit to move in our hearts today. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. And we give you all the glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Port Charlotte. <laughs> It's so good to be here, and I had to stand today because I wasn't able to see all of you last week, so now I, I'm able to see all of you. Uh, and it's so good for us to be here today. Uh, we're really, really sad that Roger was not able to come this morning, uh, but we will be praying for him so he, he can feel better soon. We're going to sing Shout to the Lord. I hope this is a familiar song for you guys. Let's worship together. Hey 
This next song we're gonna sing, it's called Revelation Song, and it's so powerful. The lyrics they speak to me in a very special way because it talks about how holy, holy is our God.
are mighty in battle, you are a savior, you are a king, and you are our God. You are the one who cleanses us. You are the one who heals us. You are our righteousness, and we worship you. Nothing can assault your throne. Nothing can stand before you. And because you are for us, we know, Lord God, that no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, we will come out victors. We will come out victors, and you will be glorified in everything. You will be magnified. Lord God, you see your people in this church. You see the cries of their hearts, the desires of their hearts. You see the fears. You see the anxieties. You know what's going on. To all those who are watching online, Lord God, they are still a part of this church. You see what they have. You see what they need. And we lift up those prayer requests before you, Lord God. We know that you hear us and you will answer us in your good time. Give us the patience to trust in you. Give us the wisdom, Lord God, to know how to move forward in what you have called us to do. We ask, Lord God, that your presence would rest richly upon your people, that your peace that passes all understanding would envelop them, would engulf them, would overshadow them, and it would reign and rule within them, that no anxiety, no fear would overtake them, but that we would rest richly in knowing that you are a God, and in you all things are possible. There is nothing that is impossible with you. No word from God ever fails, and your word does not return void. What you have declared shall come to pass, and no gate from hell can ever withstand against it. We thank you, Lord God, because you are God. We thank you because you are our God. And the word says that blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. We are blessed. We are blessed in our coming in and in our going out. We are blessed when we rise and when we sit. We are blessed when we weep and when we are joyful. We are blessed. We belong to you. We have been sealed into the day of redemption. And we honor you. We honor you because you are a God. Lord God, I commit this service into your hands today. The message, let it pierce our hearts and change us. Let, us, let it help us understand how much more you are mighty and you are a God. Let us learn deeper things about you and take us into deeper depths in you, Lord God. I thank you for this day. I thank you for your people. Comfort them, Lord God. Bless them richly and walk with us all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing a uh, song 200 in our song book and you can see the lyrics right here and I hope you guys are familiar with that song because it, it's going to be the first time I'm going to sing uh, but it has a really uh, great message and, it, and I, I could put out as a question for all of us here who can tell out the sweet story and in the chorus we're going we're gonna to sing you Yes, you, and I can point to myself, me. I can tell of the sweet story of Jesus dying for us. So I'm going to ask uh, Coronel Jewett to just play uh, the, the verse so I, I can get familiar <laughs> with the tune. <laughs>
I'm going to read the second verse and we're going to sing the third verse. Never a story so wondrous, tell it to all around. While we were sinners, he loved us. Mercy and grace abound, wondering and weary, he sought us. Back to the Father, he brought us. You can tell out the sweet story. You, yes, you. Amen. <laughs> Today we'll be reading Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Colossians 3, 12 through 17 says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let peace of Christ rule in your hearts as the members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom as, it, as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name for the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father through him. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Well, it's good to be with you, especially in um, this capacity of preaching on a Sunday. I enjoy hearing my, sir, my husband preach, but today he is with Juliana at home running around the living room instead of running around here at church. Um, and so um, today's message continues on. We're grateful that we can all preach the word of God, right? Well, in this reality, what is our role as Christ followers? We can't easily visit a neighbor. We can't easily invite a friend to church or even have fellowship with other Christ followers. I was looking through my phone and it's hard to believe that we have been in quarantine since March. That's 20 weeks ago. That's 140 days ago. I have been counting. Um, this launched our core, our church, to immediately halt meeting in person. With such a creative group of, of church members and staff, in 24 hours, we worked out a plan to have online worship from home. After several weeks, we moved to have recorded church services back in the church building. You'll remember my husband preaching on a stool, right? After several weeks, we moved, um, finally four weeks ago, we began having worship safely back in our church building, open with our church members who are able to come 
and those who we still connect with online. We are getting closer and closer to normal. Or are we? Should we even be striving toward normalcy? Let's take a step back and consider how quarantine has affected the church in general. In an article recently published by Carrie Newwolf, he wrote, seven new disruptive church trends every church leader should watch. He, re he reiterates that crisis, crisis, after all, is not just a disruptor, it's an accelerator. For example, he suggests some changes that were likely to arrive in five to 10 years, like working from home, arrived in just a couple of days because of this crisis. Some of the stats he charged caught my attention. Maybe it should catch yours too. A new poll by Barna Group showed that during quarantine, there was an initial increase in online attendance. You all watched online with us. We were all part of that. And I would like to especially thank those who attended worship online. Thank you for your faithfulness, clicking that button and here and bringing us into your home. You all are missed and please stay safe. Though after a couple of weeks, the stats show that there was a slump. With all of this, 48% of churchgoers say that they have not watched any online service for the past four weeks. Almost half of all churchgoers haven't done any online or in-person church in a month. There's also another piece of information. Only 40% of churchgoers report watching their regular home church online. 23% said that they streamed a different church, whether in place of their regular church or in addition to their regular church. This focus on online worship gives us many different options. As we get closer to schools starting, um, to, uh, starting to open, 25% of churchgoers aren't, aren't sure or aren't coming back to church until we have safe conditions in our communities. Then we have 30% who say they will, not, they will only return when they can be mask free at church. Researchers like New Wolf can tell you more of what these numbers mean to the church culture, but I began to think of our worldwide church. There are Christ followers all over the world who are prohibited from meeting in public or reading the Bible. How are those churches growing? How are those individuals living out their faith in those secret churches? If it's so hard for them, why do they even risk trying? What is their motivation? Colossians 3 verse 1, where we have, and I would say, put your finger there, because we'll go back to those verses often. Colossians 3 verse 1 simply puts it, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, the right hand, is at, seated at the right hand of God. Dear friends, why do you believe? Our faith that Christ has raised us from the death of our sins. Christ has broken the chains of darkness in our lives. The faith that Christ gives hope in impossible situations. Now, I know you have your mask on, but I would like to hear an amen from there, right? Christ has our faith that Christ is a friend who never leaves. We believe Christ is our savior from sin. We have and are privileged to have a relationship with him. That faith that raised us from the dead is what unites us to that Christian church all over the world. The greatest gift of salvation given to all who will receive. 
Do you have a relationship with Christ? If you do, Paul goes on to tell the Colossians practical ways to live. So remember our thumb is in that part of our Bible. Let's keep reading. These are practical ways to live. Number one, you are not to live as everyone else lives, but at those who live in Christ. Verse two through four say, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears then, you also will appear with him in glory praise the lord for that we are to live with the personality that god gave us the gifts and talents that god gave us the experiences that we have for that god redeemed for us to live for him right setting the way earthly things aside living for him number two we are to live as new people, even during the times of COVID-19. I know many people started new habits. That's part of this, living as new people. That means that we ask God to clean our lives and make us new, not just once a long time ago, but daily to make us as new, clean us, and ask his Holy Spirit to change us. Verses 5 through 11 guides us. Um, part of this is abstain from worshiping your earthly nature. In some other parts, it was abstain from worshiping, um, abstain from worshiping sex in our culture today. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs in your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. We can live as men and women making choices, using our mind, using our hearts, using our, our knowledge to be, to make choices for Christ, or we have the, the other way of acting like animals, living and doing whatever feels good or whatever we think is right. Verses 6 through 7 say, because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. So we abstain from worshiping our earthly nature. We go on to say, clean up the way you talk and root out dangerous emotions and pretensions. Verse 8 through 10 say, but now you must rid yourselves of all things such as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self and its practices, and you have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge of the image of this creator. Friends, in this day and age, we are to see each other as new creatures in Christ, right? That is respect. That is a value for others. So we watch the way that we, that we um, speak. We watch for our dangerous emotions that are coming out in us. We bring those before Christ when we do feel them. Because guess what, friends? We might feel those, but we bring them before Christ for him to root them out and change them and clean us. We continue on. Um, live without prioritizing social classes, religious or political standings, or race and status. This affects our culture today and what we're going through as a nation. Verses 11, there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Christ 
is for all. And Christ's discipleship is our main priority. The next part that we go on, practical ways to live. We shed these sins and habits so that we can live in harmony with one another. We can build each other up as the kingdom of God. Verses 12 says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against each other. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. We are not afraid to do the hard and deep work of acting with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with patience and forgiveness, because it is hard work to do those things. These qualities are not forced on us, just as we plan to get up and to choose our clothes for the different occasions of the day, laying out what we will wear for the next day. We also choose and plan ahead of time how to purposely act with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with patience and forgiveness because we are not perfect. So we need forgiveness to ask and to give. Working from home and taking care of my girls, um, there have been many days where we wanted to stay in our pajamas. One person in our, from the girls never stayed in her pajamas. She was the one that laid clothes out the day before and make sure she was never in pajamas. But when we changed and got our regular day clothes on, our attitudes to tackle the day improved. We were ready for the day. We were ready for the chores. We were ready for the activities. These qualities, kindness, compassion, humility, patience, forgiveness, they don't just happen. But we ask the Holy Spirit to use these every day. Our mindset changes when we decide before something bad happens what our attitude will be. And practicing these Christian values, not only is our relationship with Christ strengthened, but our treatment of others and the quality of our relationships with others, they build the kingdom of God. The knowledge and faith that we live in Christ, combined with practical acts of discipleship, bring us to verse 14, perfect unity. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. Can we put that all over Facebook and social media? <laughs> Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to be to, to you were called to peace and be thankful. Our relationships with others, ideally, they go beyond meeting together on Sunday. Think about the people that fill your Monday through Saturday. Think about them, you have them all in mind. Your family, your mailman, your spouse, the cashier at the fast food place, the people you talk to on the phone, the people you connect with on social media. As school is preparing to open, the receptionist that calls, that you ask to, that you speak with about all the safety questions, can they all tell that you are bound in the love of Christ? Although Paul was speaking to mainly to the Colossians of group of Christians, can the general public tell that you chose to wear compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and forgiveness? 
I'll tell you I have to wrestle with that question. Can they tell that you are having church outside of church building just by the tone of your voice? In this pandemic, I've had restlessness about our church. I wrestle with what programs we are to have in the fall and winter. I wrestle with the question of are our kids that normally come on Tuesday nights, are they hearing about Jesus? I wrestle with the priority of making sure our men and our women who needed community on Tuesdays, that they know that this church values them and that they are not forgotten. I'm sure you have restlessness of your own. You might be even overwhelmed financially, uncertain about children going back to school, need a break from the people in your home, maybe, Worried about the coronavirus spikes that continue to increase. There might be loved ones very sick and grieving, and we heard about Roger being not well today. With all of this, you might wrestle with whether church is even important anymore. If you are feeling this, I have felt this too. But then God sends a friend who quickly calls me, and we laugh about the simplest thing and quickly my anxiety flees. Friends, this is how the body of Christ works. Have faith in this love of Christ. Doubt the doubts that you are, might experience. This connection of love means that anywhere you go, church and the spirit of unity is in session. We've said it before, the church is not closed, it is deployed into our community. For the Salvation Army soldier, these are not new news. Remember, we are known for having open airs. Our strength is meeting people where they are at. You have been freed to tell Jesus everywhere you go. This also means you are free to receive Jesus anywhere you go. Our world today is filled with great division, anger, hate, lies, hidden secrets, violence, injustice, and even greater evil. You are called to be faithful giants outside of these sanctuary walls. To do what? To tear down evil's oppressions, we are called to this, as few as we are here, and our friends that are joining us online, that is our call, to be faithful giants outside of these sanctuary walls to tear down evil's oppression. What happened to our amens? Amen. amen. Our sermon today ends with Colossians 3, 16 through 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you reach richly as you teach and admonish one another with all the wisdom as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I have to ask, what does your heart sing today? Could it be anger at a family member? Anxiety and distrust with our government? Grief over a loved one or someone who is sick? Disturbed by injustices and the racial issues of our nation? If we are to be giants in faith, we are to take faithful and possibly even risky steps toward engaging in our homes and our communities for Christ. Will you say in your heart that you will not go back to the old way of church? Will you say that you will place Christ above your emotions, Christ above your doubts, Christ above your political views? Oh, it's getting riskier. Christ above your nationality, Christ above your education, 
Christ above your race, Christ above even yourself, shedding your desire to hear others say, oh, she is a godly man, she is a godly woman. Shedding that, but going over, but going after others saying, she serves a great God. He serves a great God. How can I, how can I know that God? We want others to say that. This is the love of Christ for you and for me. We are to throw that rope out of love to someone lost and reel them in to the body of Christ. There is someone out there, it's not is there, there is someone out there that needs to hear the message of redemption through your words. Who do you need to talk to this week? Remember, is not is there. There is someone out there that needs to hear God's redemption story through you. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you. We are so unworthy to carry the Holy Spirit in us. We are unworthy of your salvation and that precious gift, yet you want us united to you. You want to walk with us where we go. You want to dwell in our hearts. You want to give us hope. You want to give us joy when our soul wants to be depressed. God, we ask you to break those chains that we have inside of us. God, we ask you to break the chains of those that are in our congregation and our families and our loved ones. God, you are the God of miracles and we pray for that, Lord. There is an urgency for us to get to know your word. For some of us, we've put the Bible and it has all types of dust all over it. Lord, we pray for an urgency to go back to hearing from you, to go back to putting truths in our lives. We also pray for an urgency to tell others about your love. Lord, you called us to your kingdom, but it's not a private kingdom. You want us to reach others for you, to introduce you to others. God, I pray for an urgency in each one of us to help our community, to not be confined to church in a, in a church building only on Sundays, but for us to know that we are the church wherever we go, that you freed us so that you can free others everywhere we go. God, help us to cast off the burdens of this world. Help us to cast off the burdens of prioritizing world business instead of kingdom business. God, we pray for repentance. You know our hearts, Lord. Forgiveness is something that seems simple yet is so profound. Lord, help us to say, I am sorry to those that we hurt around us. Lord, help us to give forgiveness to those that might not even ask for forgiveness. Let it be already an act done in our hearts. Lord, we seek you and we seek your Holy Spirit. God, let us be active in your kingdom. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your love. Thank you for those that are with us today. Thank you for those that you are bringing into our church body and into our church worldwide. Thank you that you still save souls. Lord, we love you. Be with us and help us to be worthy of that call as your sons and daughters. God, thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, you've been given a task today, right? Who are you going to speak to this week? 
Who are you going to call this week that needs to hear about Jesus? Well, I don't know if you've ever looked inside our army songbook. There's, I don't think this is in many other churches, but we have a warfare section in our army songbooks. And this is my favorite section. Talks about us going out and conquering the foe, right? Right? So I'm going to ask you to stand. And we're going to sing this song, I'll Stand for Christ, for Christ Alone. You can give a stretch out because we are those soldiers about to get engaged in army and in, in, in battle once we step out those doors. Colonel, if you can play through our, our verse and chorus just once through.
thank you for your, uh, your messenger this morning, for the word that was brought faithfully to us. We thank you for one another and what we mean together, what our shared testimony of faith means here in this place and in the world. And so we ask you to go with us now and strengthen us, Lord, to do your will. May we bring honor and glory to you. And we ask this in the name of the one, to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore. Amen.